I know it's hard to pick a choose, but what is your favorite Pokemon? Or should that be Pokemon, as Nintendo themselves once corrected me? True story. I digress. Pokemon nostalgia is at an all-time high right now. Pokemon Go has got people traveling across the land, searching far and wide, trespassing, falling into ponds, causing car accidents, even getting mugged. Why? Because they know it's their destiny. Gotta catch them all. But how long is it gonna take? People all over the internet have been delving into the source code to figure out exactly how the game works. But to get a handle on the problem, we don't actually have to do that. I mean, it's not Team Rocket Science. Pokemon Go covers the first generation of Pokemon. That's 151. Yes, 151, not 145, because those six apparently missing Pokemon are actually contained within the game's files, even though they may not seem to be unlocked just yet. When you begin the game, you're given a starter Pokemon. That's one down, 150 to go, which means the likelihood of you getting a Pokemon that you haven't already got is incredibly high, right on. In fact, it's 150 in 151. That's 99.33%. Get your next unique Pokemon and that probability goes down to 149 in 151, then 148 in 151, and so on and so on, until the probability of you getting that very last Pokemon you need to catch them all is one in 151. The more likely it is to find a unique Pokemon, the less time it's going to take. It follows the geometric distribution. Now, if P is the probability of finding ourselves a new Pokemon, Victory Bell, then the likelihood of doing that within K encounters of spawned Pokemon is given by this formula. As we start to build up more and more Pokemon in our Pokeballs, then the distribution evolves, as you can see right here. Now, the continuous version of this, called the exponential distribution, which I talked about a little bit in my Ferris Bueller video, is used all over the place when we're talking about random events. For instance, in physics, the decay of an unstable particle follows this distribution. Be that a radioactive nucleus, a cosmic ray muon, or whatever was in Schrodinger's hypothetical box. Meow. On average, it will take one over P encounters to find a Pokemon that you're actually looking for. Though in reality, it could obviously take more or less time. So we need to take into account the standard deviation of the distribution. Here it is. With our series of probabilities and then the average times and the standard deviations, we work out that it will take 845 Pokemon encounters on average, plus or minus 191, to catch them all. But how long is that in real time? Redditors have figured out that each Pokemon that spawns sticks around for about 15 minutes before making like a Zubat out of hell and despawning. And the spawn rate seems to be proportional to the number of players at that location. So if there are indeed one Pokemon per player at a given location, then it should take eight days, give or take two, to catch them all. If that sounds far-fetched, you'd be right, in fact, because we know the spawns are dependent on the Pokemon type. Such as water, grass, and ghost. Generation 1 has 15 different primary Pokemon types, and each will tend to be found within a certain environment. So we need to split those 151 up by the different types. Using exactly the same methods as before, but for each particular type with the correct number in each, we find that the average time to catch them all almost halves. Five whole days of playing. But there's not a 100% chance of you catching the Pokemon that you want. If we take the average catch rate for a standard Pokeball from the original Pokemon games, it means we need to multiply the time by a factor of five. So 25 continuous days of play to catch them all. Golduck. 
Thank you so much for watching this video about Pokemon Go. If you're into probability and stuff like that, I've put a few of my videos on similar topics over there. And of course, you can subscribe. Thank you very much.